Construction of single-phase induction motors. Concept of split phase in single-phase induction motors. Why capacitors in motors? Centrifugal switch in single-phase motors and working principles. Other single-phase induction motors have one capacitor, while others have two capacitors. Why? And many other things. In this video, I will brief all of them. Single phase is like any other motor. It consists of stator and rotor. The stator winding is single phase winding instead of three phase winding. The stator core is the same as the core of three phase induction motor. In a single phase induction motors, there are two windings that are used except in shade pole induction motors. Out of these two windings, one winding is the main winding and the other is auxiliary winding. The stator core is laminated to reduce the eddy current loss. Rotor on the other hand, in single phase induction motor is the same as a rotor of squirrel cage induction motors. Instead of rotor winding, rotor bars are used and it is short circuited at the end by end rings. Hence, it makes a complete path in the rotor circuit. The rotor bars are braced to the end rings to increase the mechanical strength of the motor. The rotor slots are skewed at some angle to avoid magnetic coupling. And also to make rotor run smooth and quiet. At first when we have a single main winding and supply an A.C current. The magnetic flux induced in the stator main winding will be alternating as shown. Hence a stationary rotor brought in between will not rotate. It will be vibrating as shown. This is because of double field revolving theory, which I have represented by two separate revolving blue and yellow magnet fields. With one re revolving clockwise and other anticlockwise. Here the sum of these two separate revolving fields is equal to the initial alternating fields. This is because of double field revolving theory. Hence forces induced by single phase a dot C supply on these windings are equal and opposite. Hence, when trying to balance the motor only vibrate. When we provide a rotor with a slight rotation before it is placed between the field, it will rotate continuously. Hence, there is a requirement for the provision of initial motion to the rotor. And this can be done in many ways. Through split phase. Through capacitor start. Through capacitor start, capacitor run. Through permanent capacitor. Through shaded pole. Now let's start with split phase induction motor. An extra winding is wound on the same core of the stator. So there are two windings in the stator. One winding is known as main winding or running winding. The second winding is called starting winding or auxiliary winding. The auxiliary winding is highly resistive winding and main winding is highly inductive winding. Auxiliary windings has few turns with a small diameter. The aim of auxiliary windings is to create a phase difference between both fluxes produced by main winding and rotor winding. With these two windings, a flux is induced such as it rotate. One flux adds to the other flux and the other flux cancels out. Hence will form one strong magnetic flux. It will create a phase difference between fluxes and resultant flux produces a rotating magnetic field. And the motor rotates. Also the phase difference created by this method is very small. Hence, the starting torque of this motor is poor. So, this motor is used in low starting torque appliances like a fan, blower, grinder, pumps E.T.C centrifugal switches connected in series with auxiliary winding. Auxiliary windings are only used to start the motor. This winding is not useful in running condition. When the rotor reaches 75 to 80% of its synchronous speed, the centrifugal switch opens. So, the auxiliary winding is out from the circuit. And the motor runs on only main winding. When we have a simple switch such that a small force pushed on it, will cause the bulb to light. 
Upon placing the centrifugal switch on such a simple switch, the weight of the centrifugal switch will cause the switch close the circuit. When we press the centrifugal switch, it will lift the black base hence circuit disconnects. Hence with this concept, we need a force that will pull the sides of this switch sideways. And that is where centrifugal force is applied. Centrifugal force is well described when we have an object moving in a circular path away from center. It is formulated by F equals M times omega square R. Where F is centrifugal force. M is mass of object. Omega is angular velocity. R is distance from the origin. Centrifugal force will always move away from the center. Therefore this principle is used in centrifugal switch. Which whenever it rotates it stretches to lift the black base up hence disconnects the circuit. Hence the reason it is connected in the rotor part, to notice the desired centrifugal force. Patent for the centrifugal switch was granted to Royal Lee during the 1920s. This switch is used to provide controlled switching operation which is required in motors when specified speed is generated. Other ways of providing the self-starting for single phase is capacitor start induction motor. This type of motor is an advanced version of the split phase induction. The main disadvantage of the split phase induction is low torque production. Because in this motor, the phase difference created is very less. This disadvantage compensates in this motor with the help of a capacitor connected in series with auxiliary winding. The capacitor used in this motor is a dry type capacitor. This is designed to be used with alternating current. But this capacitor is not used for continuous operation. In this method, also a centrifugal switch is used which disconnects the capacitor and auxiliary winding when the motor runs 70 to 80% of synchronous speed. The current through auxiliary will lead to the supply voltage by some angle. This angle is more than the angle in a split phase induction motor. So starting torque of this motor is very high compared to the split phase induction motor. This starting torque is 300% more than the full load torque. Due to high starting torque, this motor is used in the applications where high starting torque is required like a lath machine, compressors, drilling machines, and the rest. Capacitor start, capacitor run induction motor. In this type of motor, two capacitors are connected in parallel with series in auxiliary winding. Out of these two capacitors, one capacitor is used only for starting and another capacitor is connected permanently with the motor for running. The starting capacitor has high capacitance value and running capacitor has low capacitance value. The starting capacitor is connected in series with a centrifugal switch that will open when the speed of the motor is 70% of synchronous speed. During running conditions, both running winding and auxiliary are connected with motor. The starting torque and efficiency of this motor is very high. Therefore, this can be used in the applications where high starting torque is required like a refrigerator, air conditioner, ceiling fan, compressors and the rest. Permanent capacitor induction motor. Here, the low value capacitor is connected constantly with the auxiliary winding. Here, the capacitor has low capacitance. The capacitor is used to increase the starting torque, but it is low compared to capacitor start induction motors. The power factor and efficiency of this motor are very high and also it has high starting torque that is 80% of full load. The last type of single phase induction motor is shaded pole induction motor. This motor has stator salient pole or projecting pole and the rotor is the same as squirrel cage induction motor. The stator poles are constructed specially to create a rotating magnetic field. A pole of this motor is divided into two parts, shaded part and unshaded part. It can be created by cutting pole into unequal distances. 
copper ring is placed in the small part of the pole. This ring is a highly inductive ring and it is known as shaded ring or shaded band. The part at which shaded ring is placed is known as shaded part of the pole and the remaining part is an unshaded. I hope you found this video informative and if you did, kindly subscribe, like and share. See you in the next one.